uh, Fadi uh, Aldakel uh, from uh, Hanover uh, University. And uh, okay, uh, the title is uh, uh, Virtual Elements for Computational Fracture Mechanics. So please, uh, Fadi. So, hello everyone, and welcome to my talk on virtual method for fracture mechanics. Can you see my uh, slides? Yes, yes, we can see and we can hear you. Perfect. So, fracture mechanics is as general, we separate the body to two parts or more parts, right? So, the idea how to compute that or how to model that. So, we will do it in different style, like you could do it like in this continuous approach to fracture. Here talking about the uh, cohesive zone method or XFEM or remashing techniques. Well, most of them require some uh, computational costs. That mean you need to know like uh, the uh, initiation of the fracture or the or the uh, let's say the coalescence. Like there are some criteria, other criteria need to be uh, known in advance to uh, get further with the method. Well, there is another method called the continuous approach to fracture. The fracture, like you can think about damage mechanics or Today, we will focus on the face with approach to fracture. When the, in the face with approach to fracture, like at the end, is continuous approach. That means those two bars, they will be continuous together, right? They will hang together, and we will introduce a new field, auxiliary field called D, for example. And this is range between zero and one. If it's zero, that means, for example, here in this area, there is no fracture. And if it's one with this red area, the fracture comes into play. Well, for example, I already prepared, we can see here is like, a torsion problem, right, of a bar, let's say, and think about, let's say, after you apply the torsion, you can see this helicoidal shape, like it's a really complex shape of uh, fracture phenomena. Well, this is really uh, easily done using the so-called face with approach to fracture. Why? It is a simple method. You just need to uh, introduce a new partial differential equation in the phenomena, and that's it. And then you solve it, and uh, you get what you want. Let's say. So no need for any other criteria initiation or propagation of merging or uh, branching. So it's general. You can see it goes from macro to micro, any complex, uh, uh, let's say, loading or multiphysics problem. Well, as other method, if it has advantage, also it has disadvantages. And one of the major disadvantages, in fact, is the requirement of very fine mesh. Think about this uh, microscopic level, right? At, at the lower scale, this is a uh, beton uh, specimen where we need like around uh, three million elements to uh, really uh, resolve a sharp crack. And in fact, even three millions is not really, uh, really fine, right? We need to really go more and more. So this is one of the disadvantages of the standard fine uh, face with approach to fracture, which we will uh, tackle today by using the virtual method also with refined mesh. Well, uh, let me set the scene first of all, like first, uh, this is, let's say we, uh, you see like, I guess you have seen this in, in Briggers and uh, Blash, like here are the major work. Let's say, hopefully, I could uh, put all of uh, the papers inside, but if I'm not, sorry for that. And uh, the focus for me today on the face with approach to brittle and ductile fracture. So, as today you have heard from Blash and in the morning from Peter, like it was a lot about uh, the construction of the virtual image method. For me, like now I can relax a little bit. I can only focus on the face feed approach. And when it comes to the uh, element discretization, let's say you already have seen that, maybe I just go fast through that. Then let me just start with the uh, face feed approach. Like what do we have? We have two degrees of freedom, are the deformation or the displacement. Here I have a large deformation, like, so like the deformation map phi and the crack face field D, which is range between zero and one, as you can see here. Like, if it's, as I say, here zero in this vicinity and one around the crack, which is represent a sharp crack, which we would like to regularize that by introducing the crack surface functional in terms of the crack surface density uh, function, which is uh, regularized with the crack length scale L. Well, this L, it, it play the role of the transition. You can think about, you have, think about this 1D problem, you have, let's say, non-crack, non-crack, like till the area where we already are in the middle, like the crack habit. So like, it's like the transition of this sharp crack to the resolved, uh, let's say, regularized crack. Then let's get, uh, 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 first of all, let me show you how to solve for the uh, face field problem for the geometric uh, approach, let's try, only by itself. So how to do that? We use the minimization problem of the crack functional, and at the end, you end up with the standard uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, uh, or with the Dirichlet boundary condition, you end up with the Euler equation, which is 
well known uh, in Facebook uh, approach structure. So let me solve this by uh, some simple boundary value problem. You can think about this is your geometry, you prescribe a sharp crack here, like as a uh, V and E, right? And you want to see the influence of uh, this link scale uh, L. So as you increase the link scale, right? Let's say you give, give it a big value, you have a diffuse crack, right? Let's say it will be like more element comes into play, right? As you can see here, the red color is, is one and you have diffusivity in the formation. Well, then let's reduce this link scale smaller, 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 yeah? As, as you can see here, B and then comes to C and D and E until, until F. As we reduce that, the crack will be regular, it will be, let's say, uh, sharp, as you can see here, and uh, till you reach the, uh, let's call it like that, the sharp crack, right? So in, 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 the, in the average sense, or let's say in the approximate sense, you, you go from the uh, regularized to the sharp. However, the cost you have to pay here, you have to give a huge uh, mass refinement around the crack tip, right? Which is the cost for this method. Well, uh, apart from that, it's kind of a, a robust, uh, uh, let's say, method, and it can predict the crack initiation and propagation in, uh, without knowing when the, uh, any, uh, let's say, initial crack, let's work like that. Well, this is represent a geometric approach structure, right? So like here, I have no driver as a mechanical driver for the phase field. Now let's link that, let's say, uh, to, to, uh, to the mechanical part, right? Let, let, let's link, like, as you said, like, link it to the mechanical part. How? Well, we do it like this. Let me just bring this above. Okay. Huh? Exactly. So we have here's our fields, right? Uh, the two fields, and out of that, we get the constant set variables. As you can see here, we are in large deformation. We have the metabolic decomposition, elastic and plastic part. And we use the, let's say, this kind of uh, uh, energy formulation, which is so the energy, you have the energetic part, right? And in fact, here I just put it in general, you could have brittle fracture or ductile fracture, or let's say like, I just wanted to make general, like if, if you have only brittle fracture, then your energy, let's say, or so the energy only contain the elastic part and the fracture part, right? But however, if you have elasticity with the fracture, you have elasticity, then plasticity comes into play, and at the end, you have the failure with fracture response. Well, the standard in, in phase field, let's say, approach, like you have to uh, degrade the elastic response when the fracture comes into play. So like, when we have an initial fracture, let's say you have a degradation of the uh, of the energy, right? Well, this can be done in different ways. Here we, we have the, the standard, let's say, degradation function with the quadratic one, one minus d squared. In literature, you can see many approaches uh, talk about higher order or exponential one or other uh, functions. Well, here we choose this, the, the simplest which you could find just to uh, explain the general idea. Also, like uh, one other thing which is important in, in uh, phase fracture, which is we would like, we require the fracture to be intention to prevent crack healing, right? Let's say we have always crack opening, like when, not to prevent, let's say, like uh, the, the point comes to each other, right? Well, this also a talk by itself, like what kind of uh, decomposition would you, we would like to use. Here we, we use also the standard one, the volumetric pivotoric split, let's say, and uh, uh, and we, we, we put the fracture in, in the positive form of that. So if you have only elasticity, this will not be there, right? Let's say, uh, or, or let's say in general, if you have, uh, no, sir, fair, I will talk about that later, let's say for the plasticity, then you would get or not the great for plastic part, but this is what we will see in a, uh, in a minute. Well, this is how it uh, is defined in general. And then this is for elastic part and the plastic part will be like, it look like that, right? And if you have a degradation function, you degrade the plastic, but like here is also by itself, you could see in literature, people de degrade the, the yield function, but here we, we, we start from uh, energetic response because we know that the, the area behind the stress strain response represents the energetic criteria, right? Let's say, and this is, it has an elastic part and the plastic part, and both of them has to accumulate it till the fracture comes into play, then we have the crack, right? And then for the crack, this is how we uh, model that, let's say this is, uh, oh, uh, let's say like representing, let's say like a regularization with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the viscous effect, right? And this is the driving force. And uh, yeah, what is uh, left for us is plasticity, right? Plasticity need an algorithm for plastic uh, uh, fields of evolution equations, right? This is also standard. Let's say you could see it 
in different books, right? And I don't want to go in details in that. I just want to show you like this is, you have exponential function, right? And what is left for me only to talk about the driving force, right? Which is drive the evolution of the crack facing. First of all, here's first, first of all, my, my uh, balance equation, right? This is the, the momentum for the, uh, for the, uh, let's say, solving for the mechanical problem, and here is the equation for the phase mean. What is left for me is only the driving force, right, which is drives the evolution. We said in the, the fracture started when the elastic energy and the plastic energy reached the critical energy. This is, I call it psi C, right? So this psi C could be linked to the GC criteria, in, in, in ex, which comes from experimental data, if you uh, have some uh, information about that, or one can think about another criteria, like about, think about this other criteria with stresses or strains, but uh, we stick here with the energetic criteria because it's more physical meaning behind, behind that. And yeah, that's all actually what I can show you uh, about the theory in general. What is left for me, like I will, uh, this is the virtual method, method. Let's say you have already heard a lot about that from uh, Rigas and Blash. I can really skip all of that because you already have seen that. Maybe I just wanted uh, to come uh, to talk about the, um, the parameter beta, right? Which is, uh, you could see like it's between zero and one. And uh, if it's zero, let's say we have only projection. If it's one, which is our stabilization parameter, which has the finite, uh, finite element. Then in fact, for the phase feed method, we have run different kind of uh, simulation with the finite element method. And uh, we compare our results, let's say with different betas value. And we end up with beta in the range between 0 0.2 to 0 0.6. And we end up with 0 0.4 as a average value. You can use it, let's say, for our method. However, even uh, Vrigas, I guess he has also shown you that with elasticity, where he, where he, we could have really compute that, uh, compare the energy of bending with, uh, with the bending of uh, triangles, and they were also getting better around 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 around that. And then, in a way, 0 0.4 is a good value which we can use it, let's say, uh, in our method and. Uh, and other application, we use that and we get really good, some good results. Good, now what I can show you like only a few examples about that and a few extension uh, to other applications. Nice, so the first example, which is like, uh, you can see like it's a, a, a standard uh, problem, right? So you can fix down here and you apply the load above for attention problem where we just wanted uh, to set the scene with some, uh, uh, convex and concave, uh, let's say, shapes, so you can see those animals, and uh, to, let's say, to uh, trigger the, the effects of the fracture, which is like here, you could say, okay, why not have it here? Well, we, we have it in the next example, but first of all, we just wanted to see how, it, if it works, and well, it works, and we see the evolution of the crack around the, the singularity or around the, uh, the, the, the holes and propagate in, in a curved shape. That was for brittle fracture. We extend that to the ductile fracture response. We have elasticity, elasticity till the fracture comes into play. And here we have those, uh, let's say the animals, if you want to see that, and uh, we would like to see how is the fracture response. And uh, interestingly, one can see that we have, uh, using the virtual method, let's say we can really drive the fracture really to the really high, high, high uh, for huge deformation. And still we have uh, good convergence compared with the finite element method. But however, right, let's say, uh, compare this with experiments, we will never go to this kind of uh, uh, deformation, right? Because at the end, the crack will happen after 10% before you can see this kind of sh uh, uh, shape. But it's only to, uh, to show the possibility of that. Well, the last thing which I showed to you, like, okay, we said we have so many uh, uh, refinements, we need that, we have, which is costly, and this is even for them as well as for them, right? So we need to have a higher uh, refinement with, of the matches. What can we do? Well, we are nowadays uh, introducing uh, mesh adaptivity for large deformation of the phase field. So uh, it is really simple refinement. We introduce a function, right? And we loop over all the elements and this function uh, kind of trigger uh, function related to the phase field. When the phase field reaches a critical value, okay, those, those elements will be, we, we start with a really coarser mesh. And when we reach this uh, threshold criteria, you can call it, let's say D, which is standard value. You can also think about not the D value, other values, but here the most physical one could be the auxiliary variable D and which reach the critical point. Then this element will be refined. That means we could put uh, what we have done. We put one point in the center and we, we link it to the round that we could think about refined in an element. And then we do that, let's say 
dynamically through the simulation and you can see like how it uh, nicely works let's say through the simulation and normally we show like you could see like on of phase field papers we, we, we always show like in the undeformed configuration but here we just want to show like with really huge deformation how is the uh, refinement that take place to, to, to the final failure well i guess also uh, another application for fraction mechanics where rigors already showed you that i believe let's say like where you can see like uh, the cutting techniques, right? You could, uh, let's say, uh, uh, dynamically or let's say through the simulation, you could add a new nodes, right? By describing the crack uh, bath and you could uh, simply, let's say, uh, introducing the uh, splitting through elements. So now what is left for us is like, we, we could use this, uh, uh, let's say, um, kind of uh, idea, right? So which is simply like have huge flexibility in, in the uh, crack bath and the mesh adaptivity with the face seed approach, I guess also Vigas maybe could have showed you this. Like you can see like we have adaptively uh, uh, update the mesh through the, uh, through the simulation, right? Where you have um, adaptive mesh and the adaptivity like where in this case, we reduce the commutation cost really drastically, which is really good for uh, the commutation. But this is still 2D. We are in the process now of, uh, let's say, extend the theory to 3D, but we still not finished, we're still in progress. And uh, maybe another uh, final application I would like to show you before the end of my talk. We also extend that to the contact. Let's say uh, Eduardo showed you last uh, time, or let's say yesterday, uh, the curvilinear, let's say, with contact. Let's say now we, we extend that with a phase field, and you can see like how much adaptivity can also work in the play. And, and we have a really uh, robust simulation. You can see like how is the crack uh, with, uh, connected with adapt adaptive mesh and uh, contact mechanics. Well, this is still work in progress also. And yeah, I just want to show you a few slides. Uh, what is the other possibility of uh, using the face field and uh, virtual people? Yeah, I guess that's all from my side. I mean, whatever you can see here, like, okay, this is generalization of the finite end method where you can uh, have a different application in, in, junior, uh, in junior mechanics. Yeah, that's all from my side and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Fadi. Uh, we have time for a short uh, question. Uh, Perhaps okay. uh, I have a short one. Uh, Fadi, uh, you talked about extension to 3D. I, I talk as a, I mean, I, I need, I'm not, an, I, I, it's a naive question possibly, but uh, is it correct or, uh, regarding the extension to 3D? Uh, is it this phase field approach perhaps simpler to extend to 3D with respect to the other one or what would be your? So if, if it's only phase field without the cutting technique, it is okay. Mm -hmm. but. When, when it comes to the cutting techniques, because uh, what we have, let's say, with this uh, algorithm for this cutting, it was really, uh, let's say, kind of uh, adapted or, or let's say, meant for the 2D case, if you, which is like, you can see, like, how is the cutting goes from one element to another element, let's say, and you have different kind of if conditions. But if you're going to go for 3D, like, it's, the story will be a, a bit more complicated. Yeah, but yeah. however, this we are planning to work on it in the future. Thank you. Thanks.